To sing or not to sing, the dilemma is finally over. We're talking about the controversy surrounding the Indian National Anthem. Now, the Supreme Court of India has finally made the playing of the National Anthem in cinema halls before the start of a movie an optional exercise. The Apex Court modified its November 30th, 2016 order by which it had made the playing of the anthem mandatory in cinema halls before the screening of a film. A bench headed by Chief Justice of India, Deepak Misra, said a 12-member inter-ministerial committee set up by the centre will take a final call on the playing of the national anthem in cinema halls. The court said, and I quote, Why do we have to wear patriotism on our sleeves? People go to the cinema for undiluted entertainment and to ease out. Tomorrow, someone may say people should not come in shorts, and t-shirts in cinema halls as national anthem is played there. When would this model policing stop?" End quote. के लिए इतना किया है कि इंट्रेम ऑर्डर में जिसमें ये था कि आ, सिनेमा हॉल में बजना में डेटरी है सिनेमा हॉल में नेशनल एंथम वो उसको चेंज करके ये कहा है कि डायरेक्टरी है जिसको बजाना चाहे वो बजाएं लेकिन ये भी उसमें क्लारिफाई किया है कि अगर नाश्तगान बजता है तो उसमें उसको रिस्पेक्ट देना है यू हैव टू स्टैंड विथ विच इज मैंडेटरी दैट यू हैव टू स्टैंड एक्सेप्ट विद जस्ट एक्सेप्शन की कोई डिसेबल है तो वो रहेंगे हमारे जो सुझाव थे कि प्रिवेंशन ऑफ इंसल्ट ऑफ नेशनल ऑनर एक्ट नाइनटीन सेवेंटी वन में लैक्यूना है वो लैक्यूना फुलफिल होना चाहिए वो जो कमेटी बनी है उसमें उनका मैंडेट है कि जो भी अमेंडमेंट रिक्वायर्ड है वो वो करेंगे एंड नेक्स्ट सिक्स मंथ्स में करेंगे और हम अपना रिप्रेजेंटेशन उसमें देंगे the supreme court bench also comprising justices am khanvilkar and dy chandrachur said that the committee should comprehensively look into all aspects relating to the playing of the national anthem and allowed petitioners to make representations before the panel the bench while disposing of the petitions pending before it made it clear that the exemption granted earlier to disabled persons from standing in the in the cinema halls when the national anthem is being played will remain in force till the committee takes a decision the top court accepted the government's affidavit which said that the 12 member panel has been set up to suggest changes in the 1971 prevention of insults to the national honor act the attorney general kk venugopal told the told the bench that the committee will submit its report within a period of 6 months So clearly it is a topical point of conversation and to help us understand his opinion on it we're joined right now by Marakan Paranjipe he's an Indian poet and a professor at Jawaharlal Nehru University good evening mr paranjipe thanks for speaking with us why do you think this conversation on the national anthem is so important today well first of all i want to make one thing clear that we must respect the national anthem and uh, wherever it is played it should be shown the respect it deserves people should stand up and uh, should uh, show the appropriate demeanor that the national anthem re- requires now the question therefore is where do we show it do we show it for trivial purposes at all sorts of occasions or should we prepare the grounds for it and show it only on special occasions so i think that is the question because if you look at all the countries in the world in fact in the united states there is a, a regulation that whenever the national anthem is played right. people have to stand up and put their hand on their heart you know in thailand for example it is played every single day on the television at 8 o'clock in the morning and 6 in the evening in other countries it's played on many more occasions than we have in india so the real issue is this uh, do we play it in movie halls and at uh, you know on all kinds of occasions or do we reserve them reserve the playing of the national anthem for more solemn occasions sure. state functions for example where it is mandatory i think that is the question right and that is a sentiment that's been echoed by a number of people uh, asaduddin uvesi for one of them but uh, can i ask you also mr paranjipe do you feel that we need clearer guidelines on what exactly respect for the anthem is all about because it needs to be inclusive for people with the disability and also has uh, you know this back and forth from the supreme court caused a, a degree of confusion over this issue for observers such as you and me i think i agree with you i think by uh you know bringing up this issue again 
uh, we are showing a national vacillation, you see, which in the end is not a good thing. But let's look at it positively. I think the government has appointed a committee and uh, they're going to file a report in six months. I just hope that it's a sensible report after which, you know, for several years, in fact, for decades, we should maintain, you know, whatever that report suggests. Let there be many suggestions, as many suggestions as people want to give. There sure. are online uh, apps and other ways uh, of offering these suggestions. But once a very sensible policy is made as to how to respect the national anthem, then I think we should carry it forward for several years instead of revisiting it every few months and then uh, dilly-dallying and giving contradictory messages. You know, I just wanted to say one more little thing, which okay. is that uh, when I was growing up, I remember how the national anthem used to be shown, uh, you know, in all the movies we attended. And in fact, I still remember how often it was shown at the end of a screening, which was not such a good idea because people would start walking out and, uh, and then they said, okay, people are walking out, so let's show it at the beginning and so forth. So this is not entirely a new thing, and it's, I don't think it should be uh, so deeply politicized. As to your earlier point, obviously we need guidelines, we need to be sensitive to people who can't stand up, and right. they shouldn't be harassed, you know. Uh, and in general, you see, patriotism is not something that you should coerce and impose upon others, which is all the more reason that, uh, uh, you know, we should be rather more careful, circumspect and selective uh, as to when we play the national anthem and not just trivialize it. Right, you're preaching to the converted uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Paranjpe. Can I ask you though also, you know, uh, this whole conversation on frameworks, on guidelines and themes as far as nationalism and patriotism go, uh, do you really think they're needed or do they take away from the sentiment, the moment, um, you know, they're, they're regimented uh, or, uh, or made into exercises such as these? See, that depends. If it's done sensitively, if it's done in a way that it's not in your face or, you know, if it's not being shoved down people's throats, I think that's all right. But if it's turned into some kind of a bandwagon and, uh, you know, whipping up sentiments and the state gets involved, then in general, I think that it might uh, end up being a little counterproductive. But, you know, a nationalist ideology being uh, uh, promoted through say, schools and colleges and other what, uh, you know, the leftists, uh, one of the famous philosophers called the ideological state apparatus, Althusser called it that, is common all over the world. You look at any country in the world, they will instill some kind of ideas and idealism and some sort of nationalism or nationalist narrative, patriotism. So I don't think that if, I mean, Pakistan does it, Bangladesh does it, Nepal does it, everybody does it. So the, the real question, as I said, is how sensitively we do it. Right. And, uh, and as long as it's not uh, used as a stick to beat people with, and as long as there are no patriotism tests, I think it's all right. I think, I think there are hundreds of beautiful ways in which we can celebrate our independence uh, rather than uh, you know, turning it into some kind of ugly and jingoistic and controversial topic.